Going to get crunk. Yeah. Head back to Longview, Kelly popping trunk. Yeah. I ain't even tripping. Yeah. Riding and I'm sipping. Yeah. Yeah. Let me come through four foes, stay the tipping. Yeah. 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 Let me lap. Yeah. Watch the trunk crack. Yeah. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, see be running back. Yeah. Maybe AP, yeah. maybe AD. Yeah. I ain't even tripping because we some athletes. Yeah. Messing with Smitty yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. He get pissed if we don't make our time. Yeah. But we gon' get it because we got to finish. Yeah. Nebraska horn hustles, man, we diminish. Yeah. 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 Paint like a skittle. Yeah. I ain't even tripping. I ain't never double dribble. Yeah. Cause I'm a player from the Himalaya. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, man. Maybe back door. Yeah. Maybe fall off. Yeah. Sipping codeine cause I gotta kill a cow. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the big bins. Yeah. Oh, you boys, they my brothers, they my friends. Yeah. Holla at Co Sumlin. Yeah. Holla at the Stoops. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the Tudo Coop. Yeah. Cause I'm sitting clean. Yeah. Foes on the lean. Yeah. Look at my pants, got a sag in my jeans. Yeah. Let me sit sideways. Sideways, cause I'm steady coming. PT yeah. throwing that ball and it's humming. Yeah. I'ma gon' catch it. Yeah. I'ma gon' wretch it. Yeah. Man, I'm sitting sideways, boy, show naked. Yeah. All right, welcome into Fullback You, man. I just real blessed to have my younger bro, uh, Moses Madu. Man, Mo, how you feeling? I'm good, man. I'm good. Glad to be here. About to have some fun with you. you know? Yeah, man, I'm excited to have you, bro. You know, I, I gotta tell my listeners, I got the little allergies, and I told you I'm Will Smith off Hitch. You know, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm just, great movie, great scene. Great, yeah, I'm, I'm swollen up over here, but man, really want to tell you, thank you. Amazing career, uh, you know, not done yet. We're gonna talk about all that, mm-hmm. but every, I know where you at. But tell tell everybody where you at now. Um, and up great, up up in the great north, uh, Canada, CFL, play for the Ottawa Red Blacks. Norman guy moves to Canada. What's what's Canada like? I, I ain't never been. I've heard it's lovely. What's Canada like? It's funny because I was just talking about Canada yesterday. Um, it's amazing. People are nice. People they're so accepting out there. You know, it's it, it, and it's beautiful. The scenery, the land, and especially where I'm at in Ottawa, it's the nation's capital. So it's it's real cool. It's booming out there. People are super active, walking, biking everywhere. They hardly they're hardly in cars. So. It's different than Norman, than Oklahoma, than anything in Oklahoma. So it, it's it's cool. It's 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 a good change of scenery for me. That's awesome, man. You're a big family man. I wanted to tell you on, on here. I'm very sorry to hear about the loss of your father, man. Seemed Appreciate like a that. great man. He, he raised was. Good, great people. He was. Um, tell me about your family, though. So we have a big family. It's a a big family and full of different races and backgrounds, and it's um, a bunch of mutts. That's what I said. My brother's the same here. <laughs> so it's it's a huge family, and my wife always makes fun of us because you know whenever we have like parties, she's like, "All right, you know, well, how many people need to plan for? How's it gonna be? Do I, you know, how much food?" And and um, my mom, she's Chamorro. She's an Islander. Um, looks like a like a Samoan lady and Hawaiian lady. Um, so she's from Saipan. And uh, most people don't know what Saipan is, but yeah, if you've ever heard of Guam, yeah, it's an absolutely. island right off, the, you know, like a chain of islands. It's right by Guam. Very so it's interesting. In between, I didn't know that. Yeah, the Philippines and Japan. And my dad, my, my, well, my biological father, he's a Nigerian. Um, he actually lives in Nigeria right now in Africa. And so um, that, how they met in Texas, <laughs> and it's, it's crazy that they crossed paths, but um. I, I thank God they did. Yeah, I'm, me too. I'm <laughs> glad you're here. But talk about te- I, I didn't even know. I was looking it up, and Wikipedia told me uh, you were born in Texas. Talk yeah, about that. Uh, yeah, I, I never even knew when you moved. Yeah, North Richland Hills, Texas. Um, you know, right outside DFW, Arlington area, right around that area. Um, I lived there for about three years, and then my parents got divorced. Um, that's a long story as well. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, happens. yeah. Um, whatever you want to call it. And so we moved to Oklahoma City, where my aunt stays, and um, I've been here ever since. Uh, man, we, we got to talk some OU football. I mean, you, you've you been a, an amazing player, even beyond college. Um, talk to me about the, just the offense and what you think about that. We'll go through special teams. Yeah. And I know you played that too, but mm-hmm. uh, let's just go through offense first. Yeah. Um, we'll be good. I think, well, I've heard a lot of good things about the young receivers we have and the five star guys. I was, talk, I was asking about them a couple of days ago, and um, they were saying one cat is probably going to play a lot this year. The Drake one. Bridges. Yeah, yeah, him. Yep. Yeah. They were saying that cat is the real deal. If he's going to play this year, and the other couple will probably – they'll get some run time too, but not like him. They say we look sharp. The old line's looking good. Um, Big boy for more. He's kind of been moving. Bray, around. Yeah, walking, yeah, yeah. Guard. He's been he's been moving around from tackle to guard, so they don't know what's going on with that. Um, They say – so, you know, of course I've been asking about the quarterback situation a lot. And, you know, basically – from my source, he said he though he put all his chips in right now on Mordecai. I said, "Wow, really?" He was like, "Yes, wow, all my chips will go to Mordecai simply because they're both making the same mistakes right now, and, and and why not go with the younger guy who has 
his ceiling is a little bit higher being young and, and he can, you know, so that's what he said. You know, he said he's out there spinning it too. It looks good throwing the ball. I guess he didn't look so good at the spring game throwing the ball as most people have seen in practice. But but I've also heard what Jalen brings to the table. Kind of like last year with Kyler, his legs, you know, that kind of separated him from the competition. Yeah. And that that's really – and I told him I would go with Jalen if they were close like that. I was like, it was me. I'm going with the guy with the experience and who played in the SEC and led Bama in the national championships. I'm kind of the same way. Um, you mentioned Bray. I'm real, real proud of him. Got to mm-hmm. work with him. That's actually his big ass shoe over there. Them size 19s. Uh, the Reeboks. Yeah, them Reeboks. Yeah, them joints from his sophomore Golly. year. Yeah, thanks, crazy, some Shaq shoes. Uh, but real proud of him, man. You know how it is, Mo. Moving a position, moving from tackle to guard is not mm-hmm. easy. Um, you brought up Trajan Bridges. I got to see him at a rivals camp, and man, he was the best. I've seen highlights. Man. I've seen highlights. He, he, yeah, he, just for me, he, he. You've played pro ball, and you playing pro ball. It, it just. He, he plays the game such a professional level. He doesn't really give his – he doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't yeah. – he, he forces you into mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Theo Weiss kid that caught two touchdowns is amazing too. Um, you brought up a, a quarterback dilemma. You made some news on here. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's go back into that. I mean, yeah. uh, talk to me about the quarterbacks that you had. I mean, hell, you were on the 08 offense. I mean, probably one of the best offenses ever. Ever. I had a Heisman. Uh, just talk to me about the quarterback position, kind of why you said experience and yeah. the quarterbacks that you had. Yeah, so I played with Sam. I, well, first I played with PT. <laughs> PT Cruiser. Now that, that was after you know the whole red thing. Oh, that was so crazy. Speaking of the red thing, but um, so I played with PT, and you think of a guy who just got thrown to it, like he was playing receiver, and it's like, hey, guess what? We need you to play quarterback this year, and came in, led us to a Big Twelve title. I you know we beat we beat Zach Taylor in Nebraska. You know the head coach of Cincinnati now, um, which is a great feet in itself awesome so yeah another great guy and then of course i play with sam everybody knows sam unreal and i tell people like about sam they don't realize how athletic the man was like he may look stiff back there in the pocket or he not maybe move like you know whoever like mike vick back there but he was super athletic if you watch him on a basketball court so whenever we got to ou um it's a funny story we all went to the huff to hoop and he caught a oop <laughs> on gk no lie everybody was like oh my god like they do and caught a oop on, on yeah. GK Jerry McCoy and, and so from that point we was all like hey but I, I, I mean I played against him in high school us being Oklahoma boys so I knew he could hoop and he always played on like the better AAU teams in the state and so we just knew what kind of guy he was but that's when people was like hey this guy can go and then even him on scout team you know freshman year out there just throwing dimes especially his deep ball through the prettiest deep ball I've ever seen yeah. and, and also just the type of guy he was he was a great leader we always said like Sam was the type of guy you run through a brick wall for. He gave us a little speech. We're going to go score the freaking ball right now. <laughs> he would cuss. We're going to drop the ball down their throats. And he, he was a great leader and just a guy you follow because you knew he was with the shits. Absolutely. You actually you believed in him. I love it. Yeah. PT was my classmate. We came in that same year. Uh, so I just saw firsthand everything that he went through. I obviously was gone when, mm-hmm. when the year you were talking about. Yeah. Um, man, just uh, – Jay White, you, you brought up the, the Huff, and everybody used to talk about how Jay White would go in there and dunk. I heard about him, too. I heard the same type so, stories. Same yeah. thing with quarterback. I mean, you know, you you around a bunch of athletic guys, and you know how it is. But I want to get your thoughts on you, you were a special teams guy as well. Talk to me about the OU special teams. How are you feeling about them? Yes. Well, we got CD Land coming back, right? Punt return. Right. So that's sealed up. I'm not sure about the kickoff return situation. Who – uh, I don't know. I would guess. I mean, they'll they'll probably have a a, a good receiver back there. The, yeah. I, CD did punt return at, yeah. at the spring game, but they really didn't. Yeah. Because uh, we don't we like, don't really have any running backs near that could return kicks like that. Nobody really like. I'll look it up, but they. Yeah. Uh, I think they only did one opening kickoff. But uh, you know me, bro. I was looking at the fullback Jeremiah. Hall <laughs> so I'm, che- I, I'm I'm checking out my bro. You know what I'm saying? He got a few yeah. carries. So I was yeah. watching that. I didn't. I didn't. I think they did one, and they just fair caught it. So yeah. Uh, but uh, you you brought up the return game. I mean, yeah. we've. We've been okay at the return yeah, game. Yeah, hasn't we? I think that's that's a facet we've been missing as far as I think we really have. CD's had some good. He he had a, a better year last year, mm-hmm. but that's one thing I think we really need to get back into is having a good return back there, a dangerous guy because we we normally have, and that's nothing against CD. Mm-hmm. He's done a, he's done a great job, but I'm just saying, like even on KORs, you know. Yeah, I think the other thing, Mo, and you could talk about this too, is you know we got to avoid injuries with those cats. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Yeah, a lot of times if we do throw a tailback back there, and we a bunch of our Twitter questions are about rotating backs and things yeah. like that. So somebody's got to pick up that load, but it's either, yeah. it's usually either a, a running back or a receiver, and it's mm-hmm. a fucking guy we can't lose. I mean, mm-hmm. it's you yeah. know, I yeah. mean, it, it, and, and no. those are violent plays, and yeah. and so. 
we got to talk about the defense. Everybody shit on this. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, not on. I'm saying that oh, everybody that's talked about it. Yeah. Uh, not everybody yeah. defecated on us. Uh, yeah. on the field. I, yeah, you know, I, before you even say it, but my my deal, Mo, is you know they they play pretty situational, and you know, mm-hmm. I, you know how it is. Uh, you know, preparing for offenses, you're preparing for a spread offense every week. You're preparing yep. for Texas high school quarterbacks and receivers and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you're preparing to be spaced out. Have have a certain amount of people in the box. If, if you if you play us up, they're throwing over you. If you play us back, they throw uh, running yeah. in front of you. Um, talk to me about how you feel about the defense. Okay, so my thing is, you you try to put kids in situation to win their their one on one battle, and you know, and honestly, like even okay, so what, what what comes to my mind is the Georgia game. So after that game, people were pissed. People were very very mad. Uh, about the Georgia game and what happened. And I, I actually went back and I, I watched that game. And, and I looked at, like, there were so many missed tackles that game. So many missed tackles. And if you just go out there and make a play, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, of course, guys are getting beat one-on-one, this, this, and that. But, like, just, like uh, that game just came to mind because it just, just what happened, you know. And, and I'm just thinking, like, it, it's little things, like coaching, tackling, you know, and, and just technique, you know, little things that that'll – that that'll get you that much better in the game, especially when you get tired. You you, you kind of you lose technique, but then you go back to your technique. So um, there's a lot of scheme issues we can talk about, but everybody knows that the, just the shit wasn't right. Um, but I, I think it's just getting back to basics because I even this past year, you know, it's just easy things flipping your hips and running. You know, I uh, it's I don't know, it's tough to get into. Um, but I think a lot of people have the same, you know kind of views on our defense you know they were pretty damn bad but i think if if you coach up a defense enough on just technique and the basics then a lot of that bad stuff that you saw out there isn't going to happen again i i think and this will kind of lead me into my next deal talking about pro your pro career i mean you've had an illustrious one by the way my man so congratulations thank you i've I've been blessed man i've been very very blessed you bring up a great point for for a lot of people what they see is our linebackers and dbs out in space missing tackles yeah they see a lot of that yeah what i also know about that mo is you and i it's hard to play early as a runner, mm-hmm. it's very hard. So a lot of times in our experience, especially when you, you know, and I look at receivers, you look at the guy from Iowa State. I mean, the the receiver, Hakeem Butler, that's coming out. A lot of times we got freshmen guarding seniors. Yeah. We got sophomores guarding seniors. Yeah, that's very uh, true. We've, we've got those guys trying to tackle guys that are junior or senior. Yeah, I remember when I was in school and you was playing as a freshman. You were you were the, you had to beat out some guys. You were the real deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, no we hardly had. No Especially on defense, you know, there, we we weren't young Re-tweet. like that. Retweet, <laughs> you know, like it, and, and it does it, it amazes me how many young guys we have out there, and it is so that makes that you point that that makes a lot of sense. I think that too, Mo, and kind of what you talked about, and again, you were there hosting kids on visits. Yeah, five star D linemen were coming around. Yeah, they, they were coming through. Y'all had Gerald McCoy. Mm-hmm. That was our, our last guy that we've had that that was yeah. around here like yep. that. So when it comes to playing Georgia, Alabama, Clemson, and those guys and winning the line of scrimmage, you got to have those You got to. And so here's what you I was going to say is, you know, it's an interesting dynamic when you enter pros, and I would love to hear your comments on it. Your rookie year is the only year they really give you to figure it out. But after mm-hmm. that, missing a tackle in the open field is unacceptable. In the pros. <laughs> yeah. right? No, you're right. It's, you're right. Different, it's different you're than right. your sophomore year in college. Yeah. It's different than your sophomore year in the league. Yeah, you miss that in the league or in, the, in CFL, you out there. Yeah, you gone. You, you, how, how you feel about? T- talk to me again. You had a, uh, you're having a wonderful career. Just talk to me about that. Uh, you you mentioned maybe I don't know. You hinted at some after football ventures. Yeah, so you have to give an update us on that. Okay, we'll, you know. But just talk to me about football. Yeah. Um. Shoot. So I'm going into. I've been in the CFL since 2014. So I'm going into what my fifth year now. It's fifth, whatever, sixth. Um. And it, it's been crazy, man. I played. I've got to be a part of three Grey Cup teams. That's our Super Bowl. That's what's and, um, it, It's been a blessing. We've won one. And that was back in 2016. And I actually got hurt the game before that on my second carry of the game. So I missed that one. So it, it sucked. I um, fractured my scapula, my shoulder blade. And it, it was crazy because the doctors were like, this is normally an injury you see in a car accident. So that just tells you the type of sport football is and how brutal that. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Know. We all know, but it's like yep. a car accident. This is normal, and then like, and I got this playing football off, you know, just yep. to, um, which is crazy. But yeah, I'm playing, like I said, for the Ottawa Red Blacks. This is my 
fourth year there, and uh, I love it there, man. Um, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy. We, we lost a lot of guys this year, so like in the C, there's a lot of turnover in the CFL. Um, guys sign one year deals. That's basically that's the norm in the CFL. We got to yeah. get more into the, yeah. the details because yeah. I, I know a lot of people wanted to hear about that. Yeah. But my, my thing, you know, I'm around a lot of kids, training them and whatnot. And uh, now I'm moving, hopefully moving to college or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But um, advice uh, from you for, for the next up, for the next up and comers. Yeah. Keep your options open. Work hard. Don't let nobody tell you no. Like for me, I came out essentially as a third string running back from Oklahoma. Um, I came out the lockout year and I told myself I'm going to make this damn team when I, you know, when in Tampa. And I went out there and beat guys who were four-year starters and things like that because I made my mind up. You know, I wasn't going to let nobody tell me no or nothing turn me down. And um, and that's exactly what I did. Now, everybody's story is not going to be like mine, of course. But I'm going to say keep chasing your dream until it's until you really can't no more. I mean, till I, I guess you get a certain age. You get a certain time yeah. in football, you get a certain yeah. age. But, yeah. I, I mean, I came out in 11. It was a lockout year, like I said. And I told myself, I'm going to make this damn team, you know. Um and that's what I did. So chase a dream, man. Because if if I did it, anybody can do it, man. Like my story is crazy. I've 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 always been overlooked my whole career. I feel like you know I never got the chances. I've gotten chances, but not not, not as much as I, I I would want, you know, and as much as I thought I deserved. But you just take the hand you dealt with and turn it into something else, and, and that's exactly what I've done. So I like I keep saying, man, don't let nobody tell you no, and don't let your situation determine the outcome. That's real, man. I, I actually got a tailback that I've helped. I'm going to have to send you his film, a uh, kid up from Millwood we signed this year. So yeah. I'm going to definitely have to share that with him. Marcus Major, he's he's a real deal. So, uh, But that's that's right on the head, man, and he's about to report here in June. So mm -hmm. he, I, I'm sure he's going to love hearing that. Uh, speaking of, we are fullback you. I use that as a thing, but we're also a running back you. Uh, what's it feel like telling people that you play running back at OU? They be like, oh, you went to a big school, huh? They, oh, they, you know, because a lot of guys, you you realize when you, when you become a pro, a lot of guys are from small schools compared to the bigger no schools. Doubt, like, no you know, they find, they're they going to find you. Yeah, that, that's what I tell, employer. right? Yeah. yeah that's what I tell guys. I, uh, that's what I tell guys, too. Like, nowadays, you don't have to worry about going to such a big school. You're going to get seen. If you're good enough, they're going to find you. That's something else I should have said, you know, in the segment before. But, they like, they're going to find you. Like, a lot of these guys that, you know, it was great to go to OU. I loved it, and there's there was a lot of perks. But at the same time, I could have gone to UCF and and, and been a four year, three year starter, however much you know. But I tell guys all the time who ask me, I'm like, man, those those big schools are great to go to. Like, go look at, it. and if you want to go, go. But at the same time, don't overlook them small schools. For real, like the small D ones. Like, if you're good enough, they're gonna find you. Do not worry about that. I tell guys that all the time, man. But I love going to OU, and it's perks like. I come, I, go, I work out at OU now. I use the facility. I'm in the cold tub and the hot tub every day, and and I love they treat me good. Shit is nice. Now, yeah. Man. Oh my gosh, them boys are spoiled. Ooh, I'm in there in them tubs. What? Man. I'm in there taking their snacks every day. They got the whole <laughs> they got the whole kitchen area. I'm taking. They got food on food on food and shakes on shakes like fridges of Gatorade and and yeah. Propel and all. I'm I'm like stuff in my bag of snacks like we had they got Gatorade it good. We had ants crawling too. Yeah, that right. We had that the little it. metric shakes. <laughs> They get they get peanut butter and jelly scent. They got like a uh, freezer full of frozen foods you can cook in the microwave. I'm like, man, if I would have had this when I was here, like, <laughs> oh man, I would have been eating Taco Bell and stuff later now. You up. know, I mean, yeah. it, they had all like just the healthy, proper snacks you need. And I mean, it's beautiful. I'm in the, the hot and cold tubs. Like, this is crazy, man. It was already nice when I was here. And I mean, that, that's, it, the times have changed. You got to compete. You got to keep up with yeah. people, not only on the field but also. With the facilities, everything got to be built up and done up nice. And I actually heard from a guy, ours look better than Oregon's. Wow. And that surprised me because, you wow. know, Oregon's has always been, that's what you hear. But he was like, no, nah, I'm telling y'all, like, I've been in both a lot. And he's like, I like y'all's better than Oregon's. I'm like, well, shoot. shoot. That's what's up. Well, like I mentioned, man, there's a fraternity at OU, but damn, I mean, saying you played running back, I mean, you're in the same category as Adrian Peterson, DeMarco, you, yeah. DeMarco's teammate, yep. hell, Mixon now, I mean, uh, you also had Brody and Clap. tell me about, uh, yeah, bro, bro. about those two, man, my full, I was with yeah. you, my bros. Yeah, bro, bro, I love, man, I love them both, great guys, bro, bro is my guy, though, like, because he was so tight with Jermaine Gresham, me and Jermaine, like, brothers, so, I, you know, I was, always, I was always around bro, bro and him, and, and, uh, just a great guy and like he he played o line for us for um how many however many games it was because we need because we were so thin and like right. guys were hurt that's the type of guy he was and like he was probably the best blocker on the team too while i was on the team 
when he got his hands on you, it was a wrap. Over. And he wasn't the strongest. It just it's all about like I tell kids too, it's a want. Like you want to do it or you don't. Like early in my career, I didn't want to block. I sucked at it. But now I'm better because I'm just like I'm gonna get this shit done. You know, it's just a want to get it done. You know, and that's what it was. And clap, clap is your typical like. Uh, <laughs> Your typical like crazy fullback, long hair, my man, in the locker room, rawr, screaming. He would listen to hard metal before games, like, he, like he would strength coach he, now. He, yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah, that, where at? at Indiana? Wilson. Too. What? Yeah, he's been I didn't Burma. know that. Yeah, bro. I bet they love him. Yeah, I'm gonna tag him in this. He, he yeah. Really, yeah, yeah, dog. Tell clap, I clap. What's up, my guy, yeah, man? He, he and listen? Yeah. just, just like he should have <laughs> been in um, what's that movie, man? Um, the football movie, the, the country boy. Varsity Blues. Yes, he should. Yeah. He he would have been a character in Varsity Blues and fit in perfectly. Like he just he just fit. And he was an athlete too. He could no run, doubt. man. He could no move. Doubt. No doubt. He could move. Didn't have the best hands in the world. No <laughs> doubt. That's, Back happens. then, we weren't throwing the ball to the fullback, anyways. But <laughs> bro, that real shit, real shit. <laughs> hey, but uh, Clap was my bro. We helped recruit him. So my senior year, he was uh, re- he was right behind me. I love um, Clap, Brody. I was part of. I told this story last time, but man, we moved. I, my it would have probably been my sophomore or junior year. We had brought Brody in. He was a DN and he was red shirting. Yeah. Well, he was doing okay at DN, but we I think like you mentioned going thin. I mean, certain something happened. Yeah. We had to move him to board drill at tight end one day. And yeah. He, I'm telling you, yeah. Smack somebody. We was like, yeah. Tight end. There it you is. Know, yeah. He he was a hybrid tight end fullback, and Everything. even in, and even in the league they. Cause you know the league started getting rid of fullbacks. Guys started getting rid of you guys, man. And yep. They moved a the tight end back to the fullback and have him do that in short yard situations. And, it is what it is. Yeah. It's some bullshit. But now Carson Myers <laughs> going to handle. He's the you know re- evolution of everything. So he's going to make it three fullbacks in the league for us. <laughs> so nobody else compares. Tell me about Mad U. Okay, so um, it's just an idea my brother came to me about years ago, man. And just because we we've always you know loved fashion, especially him. Um, he's always been an out of the box type guy when it comes to fashion. I've always loved fashion. I don't think of myself as like a high fashion guy, but I know how to dress. And people always come used to come to me for ideas as far as what to wear and things like that. So the shit is clean. <laughs> it's clean. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, he okay. came to me, and, and we just literally started it like in, in a garage type setting. You know, just printing out our own stuff and and cutting stuff up and sewing it. He taught himself how to sew via YouTube University, and um, since then, and it's really taken off, man. And and people always compliment us, which is good because we don't – we try to pride ourselves on being the type of company where you're going to spend – like we try to mark ourselves as a kind of an upper echelon. Like we, we kind of priced our stuff in a certain way so we attract the right crowd, you know. We didn't want to make it like – no offense to them companies, but like a little hood company, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. selling these little T-shirts, yeah. you know, get to the money type yeah. T-shirts. Nah, we want to be, you know, like an urban streetwear type so. upper echelon type company. That's how we market ourselves as a clean cut type company and – We've had we've had our ups and downs, man, but we we keep on producing stuff and launching stuff. And we recently had Khalid um in some of our gear for one of his photo shoots and he posted the pictures, actually a billboard photo shoot because his album landed at number one on the R and B charts and he was wearing our stuff, so it was real dope um that, that that happened and so hopefully man, we just keep on taking off and get it to where like this is something that we really profit and big off of. Man, you repping the culture the right way. That's how I look at it. Uh, but yeah, another deal, you man, you killed the franchise uh, radio, uh, doing real, real well with that. Uh, to me, I, I think you're a pretty versatile guy, man. I, I've seen the training that you do. I've seen how much X's and O's you know in football. I, I, I think you're a very – any of those could possibly be in your future. What do you think? First of all, I appreciate you put yeah. me on, man. What's up? <laughs> Big bro put me on. Thank you. I do what I can. <laughs> so, uh, it was man, I loved it. I tell people, like, I loved it, and and I, it felt natural. It just you go in and you talk sports, and I could talk sports all day and, and just cut the shit with people, you know. And and I loved it, and I would love to do it more. And um, so hopefully, hopefully it could work out for me. They got me spot filling, you know. When guys are sick or down, they don't have anybody. I'll go in and do it. But and they talked about doing some real cool stuff with me in the future uh, when I'm done with football. So hopefully, I can get into that a little bit more when some spots open up and things like that. And I really want to do that, like along with coach, like the coach here in Oklahoma. Um, and also do radio too. Anybody listening, gotta hire my man. Uh, we're gonna do these four Twitter questions, Mo. Man, this has been amazing, dude. We gotta do this again, bro. Yeah, you know, so, I'm all for it. For sure. Uh, my man, I believe this is OU. It's at OU the Slammer. It says, talk about the 2008 Big 12 championship game versus Mizzou. DeMarco gets hurt on the opening kickoff and mm-hmm. you fill in with 100 plus yards and three touchdowns. Great. Uh, how did, how did you prepare for the game knowing that, uh, star RBs were always in front of you, Chris Brown and DeMarco Murray? Yeah. 
Um, I went into that game thinking it was going to be another game, honestly. You know, when you were a young cat, <laughs> like when you're a pro, you're prepared for any game, you know, because you know what can happen. I was a young, I was a red shirt sophomore. So I came in there like, you know, I might get in here and there. Um, but I didn't think it was going to be nothing like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get in here and there, whatever. We had three man rotation, but it's really a two man rotation. Right. And, um, and then DeMarco goes down, and I was like, okay, let's eat. You know, it's time to shine because. I knew what I could do, and, and guys on the team knew what I could do because they saw me do it in practice all the time and in games when I would get in, you know, toward the end. <laughs> but it was just one of the games I'll definitely, I'll definitely never forget. Um, my parents were there, a couple of my good friends were there, and I remember just going out there and be like, "Man, it's time to shine! Like, let's have some fun." I was freezing my ass off, but um, it's probably one of the, the funnest games I've ever played in, and um, just one of the best games, definitely my best collegiate game I was a part of, and. It just, I remember after the game, like, I, I started to tear up because I was just so happy that I got to be a part of that moment and be a part of that win in that way and just get in there and just shine the way I did. Yeah. Man, they brought up Chris Brown. I got to send a shout-out to our bro, man, and, and just let him know that if he's watching, man, anytime he's down, we're here to pick him up. Yep, uh, for sure. You know, any brother of ours is is, is family. So, yep. uh, on, on the at Chris underscore Lambacus, he wants to know, what has it meant to you personally that from your time at, at playing at a, in OU in a very talented backfield to making an NFL roster than is playing in the CFL? As long as you have knowing that, have you always persevered and have see, have you seized every opportunity set out in front of you? Dang, that's a good question. Have I always persevered and seized? Um, I like to think I have. I could definitely do a better job at that. <laughs> um, especially when I'm done playing football, I need I need to figure life out. Like it's crazy because when we're done playing ball, we're we're young. In the football world, we're old. When it comes to this, we're young. So hopefully, I, I can I can take that same mentality into the real world, and, and when, you know when things are set out in front of me, take advantage of it. You know, seize the opportunity. You're going to be straight, man. So most of the things I said, hell, if I'm saying it about you, I know a lot of other people are thinking it about you, bro, so you're going to be fine. So, And, and I appreciate the shout-out, man. Uh, you know, not a lot of people have to give up credit, so uh, I, no, I really I'll give it appreciate hey, helping I'll you I'll always give it out when it's due. For sure. At 44DMJ wants to know, what's your thoughts on being part of a three-back recruiting class with DeMarco and C. Brown? Yeah. Kind of rare, but, oh, you might do it again in this class. Hmm. All right, so – when I committed, it was just me and CB, and I was like, okay, I could do this. Because, you know, when you're young, you look at rankings and ratings. I was on Rivals, and he was ahead of me on Rivals, but I was an athlete on there. Then I get on Scout. I'm ahead of him on Scout. I'm looking at his film. I'm not impressed. You know, I'm better than him. Straight up. <laughs> I'm better than him. him I ain't worried about him. And yeah. so DeMarco commits, and I said, oh, hell, here we go. Number one guy, in it. number, what, two in the nation behind <laughs> whoever. Yeah. I don't know if it's like LaShawn McCoy or somebody. No, um, it was uh, the other one's Florida State, I think. Um, gosh, what was his name? If I said it, I'll think of it. I'll, I'll look whoever it, it was, yeah. yeah, I was like, okay. And then. At that moment, I was like, all right, hell. I think he, he committed at the Army All-American game, I believe mm-hmm. it was. And I was like, oh, man, okay. So uh, it was funny because I hit my running back coach up at UCLA because I was ready to decommit from OU and go to UCLA and play ball. And um, he actually had moved on to the Minnesota Vikings to be with AD. <laughs> he was there coaching Adrian Peterson. Yeah. And so I said, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be because he was, he was the only coach I really knew on staff. He recruited me. He brought me in for the official visit, and we had a, we had a good relationship. And so at that point, I was like, man, I don't want to go there if he's not going to be there because he, he's the one who, who was bringing me in and knows my skill set. I don't want to go to a new running back coach, you know, him not like me. So I ended up staying at OU, of course, as everybody knows. And um, it, it was good because, I, I mean, I – the relationship I had with CB and DeMarco, like, we were tight, man. We're, we're a group of running backs who came in. We were tight. Definitely weren't tight from day one, but, like, we grew. We grew together, and, like, we really were tight, man. We we really were, and and um I enjoyed it all. But we definitely made each other better. We pushed each other in practice all the time. And, I mean, it was competition. It wasn't no slouching. Running back's one of those positions where you come in and you don't fuck with the, either. None of us. No, nobody. You don't, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get a spot. Like, I'm trying to – I'm from Norman. I'm going to OU. Like, I'm trying to play as a true freshman. Yeah. Like, it's like, I'm trying to come yeah. in and, and get to but, it, man. But you leave tight with running back. Oh, yeah. I was in there with Kale for just a little bit. My, my freshman year, they had me just because we didn't really even have a fullback position then. So, they moved me in with Kale first. And so, I got to see Quentin Griffin, Ronaldo Works. Uh, they, Ronaldo they, Works. Man, I ain't heard that was, name. Yeah, it was crazy. We had a man. It was a loaded. Jared Estes, Brian Odom, who's the coach now at OU. Yep. Um, loaded room, bro. Uh, it was just too much. Dante Hickson, Kewan Jones, Hickson. I mean, yeah. you, you name it. There was like yeah. five state player of the years from Oklahoma or Texas, and Ronaldo. I don't think was one of them. <laughs> 
<laughs> that tells you anything. I mean, mm-hmm. it was talent. And rankings but, don't mean nothing, yeah, man. Nothing, nothing. So it was just, uh, it was cool, cool to see that vibe. But last one, man. And then uh, I want to ask you about what it was like playing with. Bro- you mentioned uh, playing in Norman. We got to yeah. talk about uh, playing with your boy Broyles. And we yeah. got to talk about the porch. Amazing place. Yeah. Uh, at OK State Revolution, don't hold it against him. Uh, would love to hear your opinion on who plays in the league compared to Canada. Also, the yeah. quality of life of the facilities from a major school like OU to Tampa than to Ottawa. Always mm-hmm. been fascinated how some of the guys are fringe NFL but star in Canada. Yeah. Okay, so the CFL is um, essentially like a like a D1 versus a D2. Your skill set's going to be the exact same. No difference in skill set. But where, where the huge difference is is in the trenches, the O-line and D-line. That's what a huge difference is. Hard to is. find big people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So in, in our trenches, our guys are, are smaller. It's it's a it's a faster game, longer, wider field. So our guys are essentially going to be smaller. Like um, a lot of the DNs that we have in the CFL, they play actually linebacker in the NFL. And like that's funny because a lot. So most I'd say about a little bit over two thirds of the CFL guys all have the same story as me. Played in the NFL a couple of years for some, you know you get cut, at least nobody wants you back. So you come to the CFL to try to get back to the NFL, but for whatever reason you end up just sticking to the CFL. And so we all have the same story. Like the, every guy, I'd even say about eighty five percent of the guys have been on the NFL roster at mm-hmm. some point in time, whether you know get invited to a camp, a rookie camp, or any something like that. So these are guys are what who all have NFL talent. It's just that the NFL is only a certain, certain amount of spots. spots. And also, NFL, we all know, stands for not for long. Straight up. <laughs> so you go to the CFL, and, and why not go to a a place like the CFL where it's been around for uh, over 100 years, actually. That's what's up. And you know it's not going to fold like the Lions did. <laughs> and you're going to get your checks. It's guaranteed, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's a great league to be a part of. The fans love us. Like We've sold out every home game. And the team I'm part of actually just became a team in 14. And so they sold out every home game. We've been in three great cups, like I've said. Well, two with this team. And – the, it's it's also the environment there, man. So much more laid back than the NFL. It's so much more laid back. You can really be yourself instead of walking around on eggshells, kind of like an NFL, like Ooh. you do. And any guy will tell you, like that's what you do in the NFL. Straight up. Especially if you're just a, you know a normal Joe Schmo in the NFL. You're not Tom Brady in anybody. You're gonna walk man. around on eggshells. I knew every day I was walking in. <laughs> yeah, that, like, where I was yeah. at on that roster. Exactly. One or yeah, that's how it is. Like <laughs> even if you you was the uh, man in college too. So, but you get to the matter. NFL, everybody was. Don't you matter. know. Yeah, and. But that, like I said, that's the thing that separates CFL from NFL is just in the trenches. The skill positions are all the same. We've got guys. I play with guys who've been stars in the NFL who are now in the CFL and have great and had a lot of success in the NFL who are now in the CFL. Man, I, we we got to talk about your boy Broyles. Uh, we had a you know the spring game, and then he yep. after the spring game he had an event at his uh, restaurant, the Porch or his bar. Uh, amazing place i i the, yeah. the reason why i say it is there's a lot of former players that can do restaurants and that's great and mm-hmm. no hating on them i love ray's barbecue shout out to y'all keep up the great work okay <laughs> it is good. Uh, but good stuff. you know the, the thing i loved about ryan spot is one he reconnected former players that which was yeah. awesome and then two he reconnected fans with players and i thought yep. that was super super duper cool yeah. talk about y'all's re- friendship uh playing together and then yeah. his spot so me and Ryan, that's like that's my little brother, like really like blood wouldn't make us any closer. Um it was always me, him and my little brother Chica, always together, and of course our other boys. But uh uh coming up, we we really didn't get tight until I'd say about my sophomore year, which was his freshman year in high school. He was walking home from practice from Norman High and he lived all the way down Robinson. So it was Damn. It, it's a trek from Norman High, which is on Main Street. And he lived all the way down Robinson. And I picked him up like, what's up, man? What you doing? Like, you walking home? <laughs> he was like, yeah. And um, I picked him up. And from there, I took him home. And That's we kind of just, we, we clicked. Cause we always knew each other. We both went to middle school together. And and uh, one of my best friends was the brother of one of his best friends. So, we you know, we were around each other and stuff. But we weren't really, like, you know, mutual like that. Um, But then we just grew a relationship. And he became for real little bro. And um, from there, it just it grew and grew and grew up until I went to OU and he was going to go to OSU. And it's funny because people think I had something to do with him coming to OU, but I honestly didn't. Like, he committed to OSU and he was ready to go. I remember that. And man. it was him. You know, he was just going back and forth in his head and kept on switching back and forth. And essentially, he would ask me questions, but I always kept it 100 with him. Like, man, if you want to come here, come here. Like, I ain't going to tell you to come here. And I told him how it was and how it was going to have to work. And Ooh. ain't shit given to you at OU, man. Smitty. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and he knew. He, his ass redshirted. <laughs> yeah, he knew. Real. One of the greats. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, and that's how it happened, man. And it continued through college. Um, 
It still is now. We talk all the time. We're on a group chat together, me and him and uh, and our boys from you know the same neighborhood we all grew up in, and and uh, we still going that. And what and what he's doing with the porch, like he actually had told us about whenever he first thought of doing it, and like his business ventures, and like he was asking us for name ideas and stuff and all this, and how how he should um, market it and what he should do. And uh, we all had good ideas to give him, and he's he's taking off with the ideas that we've given him, and and you know things like that. And he's doing a great job with that place. Um, they're still building it up, and he actually told me they haven't lost any money in it yet. That's like they 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 have gained. That's the way to go. And yeah, they have kept gaining and gaining and gaining every month. They haven't lost at all, so that's good. And they have more plans to put a third story up too, as well. But he doesn't know. They're they're thinking about it right, right. now. You know, they don't know if it's going to be worth the money or or not because you know. Of course, on game day is, is when that thing will be, you know, pop up on. But how much are people going to use it outside of game day? Yeah. yeah, but it's it's a good place, man. We had a lot of fun there. You know, all the alumni there, you know, the, what, after the spring game? game. Yeah, yeah, yeah after the spring game. It's a great place. If you haven't tried it, go try it, man. Good. The, the French fries? Oh, my God. I'm on it. <laughs> they got some good fries there. Uh, the wings are really good. I had the chicken and waffles. Chicken waffles is good, but just just the the, the scenery of the place, the feng shui of the place, man. Like you're gonna go there and just hang out on that second, you know, the rooftop and look look the, over the view of campus, man. It's beautiful. Well, shit, you the plug, so I'm gonna just go ahead and say, come if on, he, man. If you need uh, somebody to do a podcast, there, you know, we can all three just link that, up. Hey, we should do that though. That'd be dope. Get Ryan there, yeah, yeah. yeah we man. should. That'd be cool. Bro, be yeah. <laughs> now, uh, anyway, but I, I gotta ask you this. Uh, the, I, I want to get your thoughts again. This will be the last question, but favorite touchdown, favorite game you played in? Favorite touchdown is going to be my very first touchdown against North Texas. Um, it was a little like three yard run. I did a front flip to the end zone. <laughs> I remember that, Chuck. That was clean. <laughs> I did a front flip. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have a clean picture that you, all you can see is my my number and name, my jersey upside down, and I'm flipping to the end zone. That's that's yeah. my favorite. It's my first one. And I remember like it was yesterday. I remember my stats in that game and everything, okay. man. Yep. And um, also, you said favorite game? Favorite game. They gonna have to be the, out. That's gonna clean. have to the be. Texas uh, almost stole your jersey. Yeah, that was on <laughs> kickoff return right there. Favorite games that have to be uh, Mizzou. And oh man, you killed that man. game. That, that's I was my in Cincinnati. Game. I remember exactly where that's I was. My favorite game. Letting man. everybody know. I thought yeah. it was gonna be the shit out of Florida. You know that happens. Uh, mm. I already know that was the mm. first game mm. me and my son watched together. That my son, you just got to meet my son. So he was born. We ended the season in Cincinnati like on the twenty eighth. Yeah, I got home on the 29th, Went to the hospital on the thirtieth. Had him on the thirty first. Yeah, and y'all played. I think f- uh, y'all would have played that week or a couple weeks before would have been the Cincinnati, and then that uh, the week after when he was Big born, twelve it would have been the Florida game. Oh, so, Florida game. Yeah, yeah j- early crazy. January. We yep. watched it. I was trying not to jump up. <laughs> you got kids ah, that you know game, how it goes. man. That it game. It happens, man. Ah, it's, it's okay. I mean, you know, it, it it happened to us. It happened to us fucking twice. You know, you know, you get there and you know yeah. your team. For for us personally, one year was Mike Stoops. One year, I don't want to say it was all Coach Mike, yeah. um, but him leaving just fucking. We were a wounded duck when yeah. that happened. We just weren't the same. Um, and still we're within a touchdown, but, uh, the, the, the following year, man, we were missing, uh, Tommy left early. We lost another D tackle early in the year. Um, we lost Mike again. So, you know, uh, Polini was trying to pick up the mess. It just, and then at the end of it, shit, you can, you know how it is motion. We had so many playmakers at, at, at the end of it, man, our offense, we just, we, we cluttered AD's freshman year. He had damn near 2,000 yards. I mean, you know, you, you trying to feed him, of yeah. course. And then you got MC, got by the way. All weapons out there. First round draft. You got first, second, third. Mark Bradley. People don't talk about him enough, man. I mean, so we, we had a lot of, and I, I said it on one of the podcasts and it wasn't as bad. We didn't realize, I don't want to say infighting. We just, we want the, you know how it is, Mo. The competition is fucking there. I mean, yeah. and when you get into them big games, everybody fucking wants the ball. Yeah. I shit my ass one. You ain't throwing the ball to me. I'm like, why I getting the ball? You know what I'm saying? And I, but, and, I, and I think what coaches probably tend to do as well is you get into that big game, you overthink a lot of things you shouldn't do. I was you know, just going to ask yeah, you, you know, because yeah. I mean, shit, y'all drove the field on the yeah. guys. I mean, it just we, it happens. Get, yeah, I think we're on the goal line three times to couldn't score. Talk about the high, the highest scoring offense in, in NCAA history. We get to the goal line and can't score, man. So it's just, it hurts. And I hate thinking about that game because it hurts. But I do remember, I mean, at least we lost to a team like Florida, man. They're a damn good team. A lot of NFL guys on that roster. Tim Tebow, I mean, I'm a firm believer in Tim Tebow, man. I don't care what nobody says. Absolutely. That man is a winner. We lost to Nick Saban and Pete Carroll. Yeah, I mean, right? that's the way I look at it. Y'all, <laughs> right? was, y'all lost to Urban Meyer. I mean, right? It, it's like, tch. I mean, you know, and, and you mentioned there, there was a lot of talent. And, I mean, lastly, let me get your thoughts on this. I mean, 
the 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 debate to me, and this is where I don't think people want to talk about this enough, is we're going up against the Southeast. That's what we're going up against. We're not yep. going up against uh, against USC anymore. We're mm-hmm. going up against the Southeast. Mm-hmm. What do you think we got to do to get elite linemen like that? <sighs> I don't know, but I've been saying that too. Like whenever we first played Clemson. And Ooh. they just destroyed us. I'm like, they are beating our asses in the <laughs> trenches. That's that's where they're beating us. I'm like, we got to change the way we recruit. I, I've been saying that too, especially de- even defensively. We got to change the way we recruit, man. We got to get some things going. And it's, I, I don't know, man. It's tough because how do you do it? You bring in somebody who specializes in that area, who knows that area, and knows what's, where the diamond and rough is, you know what I'm saying? Like what schools are producing or this, this, and that. It's I don't know because you really do, but. Them boys want to stay in that region, yeah, exactly. though. Exactly. So it's going to be tough to get them out of there because we've always been Texas mm-hmm. in our region. We get all our boys from Texas, a couple bit from Kansas, maybe two or three from, from Cali. You know, like, we stay in our region. But now we got to go get these big boys from that region. We got to get the fast big boys who can run and block and and, and do all that. But I, I honestly don't know. But we have to figure it out or we're going to keep on – we're going to keep on getting beaten the first round of the playoffs. To me, we've got a few options. I mean, one, you, the, the the ultimate goal, Mo, and what you talk about, I, I fucking have no life beside my son, so I just uh, either coaching my kid or coaching other kids or studying college football. Yeah. Um, I do roster breakdowns each year, and, you know, Clemson keeps a majority South Carolina roster. Um, Alabama keeps a majority Alabama roster. We keep yeah. a majority Texas roster. Yep. When when you start talking about five stars and things like that, you know, one of the best players on our team was Tommy Harris, number one player in the nation. Mm-hmm. Texas doesn't have D tackles like that anymore. Those guys are now in the Southeast. They're now and, and then the, I think the other key is Florida. You look at what George is putting together. They dip into Florida just a mm-hmm. little bit. Um, so I, I think those those are the keys. But and you mentioned that they have state alliance, they have conference alliance. Yeah. They've got Brent Venables, Nick Saban, and those guys yep. pulling at them different ways so i i think either one like you said we have to go get somebody that can bring them up two we have to build up oklahoma football you we, yep, have, we exactly. have to build up texas yep. football we got to yep. put my son you met my son he plays center right now mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm proud of that <laughs> uh, hey no but, heck yeah, yeah so uh, uh, but you know uh, we, we've got to put more kids in those positions i mean you you and i were sitting here talking before the deal and i'm sitting there telling you about my the struggles with my seventh grade team of trying to find an offensive line yeah uh, you know i've got every skill player big kids want to play tight yep. end that whole deal <laughs> um so i, I think on a similar level it's that but you know on the other side mo i'm gonna try and be real with you dog i I just i i I don't see those kids leaving in bunches coming here no i don't see a kid leaving georgia leaving alabama leaving south carolina coming here unless we move conferences I, I I think if we're playing those kids, if we're playing in Louisiana, if we're playing mm, Georgia, that's a, I we're never thought of that. That's Alabama, a great point. I never thought about that. That's the only thing. Yeah. And then lastly, and I mean, you you've traveled the world, so you've seen it. To me, that that talent isn't going anywhere, and I, I don't think it's going to just ultimately shift back to Texas the way it was. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, when y'all were bringing guys in for recruit for recruiting visits and things like that, you're used to bringing in monsters, and now mm-hmm. those guys are bringing going to other places so yeah I mean, and again you you play pro ball so i mean you get to see the biggest the big i yeah. mean you know guys I mean, want to stay close to family they want to be close to mama i want i want my mom to be able to come watch me play where's most of y'all's linemen from cfl <sighs> the american guys are kidding oh they're all american okay. well in canada it, most teams tend to try to use more of the, the canadian guys on the o-line to kind of that's the, the the three interior, but we'll use the tackles to be American, of course. Yeah, and then they'll use, like, one Canadian guy as a safety or something. A guy that can kind of, you know, I heard they're, like, up. fullbacks as, safe, uh, as Canadian. That's <laughs> yeah, 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 they do, they do. Yep, tight ends and fullbacks, exactly, yeah. yeah. That's where I kind of try to use them. But a lot, also a lot of the Canadian guys, um, they, they were here playing D1 football as well that are on the O-line. So they're trying to find the guys who have been coached well down here in the States. That's awesome. Man, we do this shit all day, man. We got kids and shit. So, <laughs> you know, I appreciate my producer, Brad Reed. It's been another amazing episode of Fullback You with my guy, Moses Madhu. Mo, thank you, bro. No problem, man. Anytime. See y'all soon.